mountains around the Kukahala right now and headed towards uh, hopefully some ice. November 17th, it's been a real mild season. So the lakes took forever to freeze up. I'm not even sure if there's gonna be ice at the lake I'm heading to. Heading to the lake, gonna check it out. If there's no ice, then I'm gonna go to another lake. Target species today, brook trout. I was super anxious to get out here. I love early ice. I love getting out on the skinny ice. I know some guys uh, don't don't like it, but uh, for me, it's a lot of fun. So stick around. Let's let's go check out these lakes and see if there's any ice out there. Check this out. We have ice. November 17th. It looks like it just froze in the last couple days. There's about inch and three quarter, two inches of ice. Super clear, super hard ice, but it is cracking under my weight. It's enough to support me, but there is a risk that you could go through. So I came out, I drilled a few test holes, you know, every five feet, went really slow, slide your feet to distribute your weight, have your ice cleats, and uh, you know, this is like sketchy ice fishing. Don't recommend for everyone, but if you want to push it at the beginning of the season, usually two inches of ice, will support you. I'm about 175 pounds. With clothes I'd be a bit more. So let's go out there. It's super clear though. I didn't see any fish. So we'll drop a hook here and if nothing's happening here we'll go. I see there's some snow covered and opaque ice over there. So that likely froze first. So it's likely thicker because there's snow on it. And a lot of times when the whole lake is clear like that the fish will be concentrated in that shady area to get out of the sunshine and they like cruising under that cloudy ice, okay? I noticed some more in that bay, which probably was the first bay to freeze because it's in the shade and uh, it's covered uh, from the sun. It gets the least amount of sun. So that bay is probably the most amount of ice down there. So I might cross onto that patch. If nothing happens here, I work my way down there and fish over there in that bay if, if I can't find any fish. Okay, so that's my plans. Let's see if I stick to it. If I catch like crazy right here, I won't have to go anywhere. I was not planning on coming up, so I'm not ready. I just, I saw the forecast. A guy told me yesterday one lake at a similar elevation was 100% froze yesterday. And I was coho fishing yesterday. This morning I woke up at 5.22 and I was like, okay, Let's take a chance because I know one lake's frozen. I didn't hear any reports on this one, but I was watching the temperatures the last few nights and it's been getting pretty low. And if you watch the rate of freezing at certain temperatures, you can usually estimate if there'll be ice or not. Always helps having a local to tell you, but uh, the only way to know for sure is to go because early ice, People aren't just going to be advertising where there's ice because guys just don't go this early. So if you really want to get out super early, you kind of have to go check it out yourself. Let's get them. I'm rigging up two rods. I have the Dead 36 from Circle Tackle and a Panfish 36. I'm going to put a spoon on one and a tungsten jig on the other uh, by Circle Tackle and uh, rig them up. I have worms and shrimp. Let's see if we can entice some fish to bite today. Okay, gonna walk out there. Got my uh, transducer, so I'm a little heavier right now. I should probably just slide it. Ooh. When it's at the beginning of the year, I always check your drag. I usually loosen them off, straighten your line out. And you can do that just by running it through your hands. Okay guys, I tried that first spot without much luck. Super clear ice, super bright. So I decided after a few minutes fishing in uh, shallower and deeper holes, not seeing any fish, just to move over to the next best area, which is this snow covered area, which gives them some shade. I started drilling holes out into it, but the ice was really thin in the center there. It looks like there might be a warm spring under there. So if you stick to the edge where the snow is frozen, it actually is thicker. So as soon as I drop my spoon down in that hole, 
a brookie came in and inhaled it. So I think we're in action. Let's go get him, okay? Let's go catch some fish. It's gonna be fun. I just walk out slowly. Take your time. No rush. We'll be here all day. If we go through the ice, it'll be a short day. Remember that when it's early ice, okay? Look at that beautiful brook trout. That wouldn't one wouldn't have survived anyway, so we'll keep him. He's got it down in his gills and bleeding bad. So that one will be dinner. Let's catch some more. Oh, there's some, there's some, there's some. Oh, oh shoot. Some of it all the way up to the ice. Oh, there he is. He's a nice one. He's a big one. Oh, there's the big bat. Oh, he's big. He's big. I got him. I got him. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice fatty. He followed me all the way up. Look at that fatty right there. <laughs> nice fat one. He followed me all the way up and I watched him hit at it a few times right under the ice. That's a lot of fun. We'll keep that one. That's a nice fat one too. Bigger brook trout can be really subtle in the way they take a spoon. They come up to it really fast and they slow down. They kind of just nip at the bait and spit it out really fast. So quite often, if you can actually watch the fish bite the hook, you'll know when to set the hook. Otherwise, you gotta be really careful if you're jigging, if you're not watching, to know when they're biting to set the hook. Right now, I'm right on the edge of that snow cover. And there aren't that many, oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. There's one, there's one. I got him, I got him. Oh, that's a nice one. Tangled in the transducer. Oh man, he's tangled in the transducer. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll probably let that one go. He's so tangled up. He's not that big, so and he's not hooked, he's only in the lip with one hook. There you go. Nice little trout. Brook trout. Getting a lot of water on the ice here. Now I'm all tangled up. That brookie was just caught on shrimp. He came in pretty good. Hit it fast. They're fairly aggressive, always early ice. That's why I love coming up first thing in the ice season because highly oxygenated water, for some reason, they're just super aggressive this time of year. Okay, I'm gonna go drill some holes in the more shady areas and hopefully I can find a better uh, concentration of fish because they aren't coming through very uh, fast in this area. And the ones that are coming through are super aggressive. So if I could find a bigger concentration of fish, a better, better um, area right now, it might be where the bigger fish are. There's a brookie right there under the ice. Can you see him? Swimming? Cool. They're coming through right here. I just saw a group of a whole bunch, maybe like eight to 10 little guys. And then the big ones are cruising. So I'm gonna fish in shallower here. Oh, there goes another one. Look, there's a whole bunch. See them all? Whole bunch of little, whole bunch. Can you see them down there through the clear ice? That's cool. I might have been down too deep. I was in 10 feet of water and these guys are scooting through like three, four feet of water right here on the edge. So I'm set up in about five feet just off this edge. And uh, let's see if any brook trout come through now. It's funny cause my hook was down there, but none of them came to it. So I'll start jigging away and see what happens. But the... Oh, there's one right there. There's one right there, right there, right there. Oh, oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. I got no bait. Oh, he's right there. I need bait, I need bait. Little guy. Little 
little guy. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, that's a huge one. That's a big one. He just came in and inhaled it. There was another big one down there, and this one just came in and crushed it. Oh, that's a nice one. See him there? He's all wrapped up in my line. I gotta get his head out here. He, he inhaled that spoon. The spoon was just gone. There was another one checking it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Check out that brookie. Oh man, look at that brookie. Oh, look at that fat brookie. He inhaled that spoon. Oh man, that was awesome seeing him come in and inhale it. There was another big one down there, so let's get back down. I need some worms or other bait because I'm out of bait. Yes. That's awesome, an awesome catch. Look at that fish. Okay, I'm getting a lot of water on the ice right here. So I'm gonna move to the other side of this patch, drill a hole in a similar depth of water and uh, try there for a bit. Fish are coming through here, but they're not hitting right now. I suspect uh, later on they might become more aggressive again. Today's one of those days, we'll just sound right through the ice, turn up the gain a bit, and then we won't get tangled. My transducer up on the ice, I can see my hook, and the transducer's out of the way, there's lots of water on the ice, so we can fish on without getting tangled like that last one. Okay, let's go down to the ice and take a look to see exactly what is happening down there. I know you guys love this part of my videos, so I'm going to narrate this portion of the video. I just had my GoPro looking exactly down the hole where I was fishing by sticking the lens just under the surface of the water so you get a really clear picture of what's going on down below. Right after turnover, the lake really clears up, and if things freeze up once the lake is nice and clear, you have an excellent view of the fish under the ice. This is one reason that makes ice fishing so enjoyable. When you fish in a shelter, you can look down the hole and see the fish, and even in early ice when the ice is very thin, it can be a bright sunny day, and you just poke your head over the hole, you can see down into the water, usually five, 10 feet deep, and watch them swimming below you. Here this fish bit the hook and you can see how uh, gentle they could actually be so it's hard to feel the larger fish bite because they don't really jerk down when they take the bait. They almost come up from below and lift it up. So if you're not watching down the hole it can be a bit challenging hooking up with some of those larger brook trout. It's interesting always watching their moods, how some can be very aggressive, some around quickly and others are just slowly drifting along the bottom. It has most likely something to do with what they're eating at the time. The larger fish swimming along the bottom are probably just targeting scuds. And these other ones might be chasing minnows or other aquatic insects in the water column up higher. Usually I'm focused on jigging spoons in winter to attract fish since you really aren't covering much ground. So if I'm waiting for fish to come I'll jig it quite aggressively and when once they show up I'll slow down. Oh I got him. I 
got him. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. See how with the sounder out of the way makes for an easier fight. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Another football brookie. That's amazing on that. Slender spoon, dead stick, 36, beauty. Just tipping my spoon with a small piece of shrimp and a piece of night crawler. I've watched a few of them come and they sniff it like 10 times in a row and they weren't biting just with the shrimp. So it seems like give them a little bit of both and they just come in and inhale it. So I don't know if that's the deal or just later. Put the transducer up on the ice though. I could fight them without getting all tangled up and uh, I could see what's going on down there. It only works in real clear ice and thin ice. Once you get lots of bubbles in the ice, that transducer signal won't send down. He's found right out of the hole. <laughs> Came up and grabbed it. What a fatty. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous fish. Look at that beauty. Fish, a lot of fun on those light rods. Dead stick, 36. Man, they just come in, eat that slender spoon with a baited uh, setup. He's croaking right now. Oh yeah, so I think I'll keep that one. Let's see if I can catch a few more. Here I am setting up the camera for another view under the water. It's always nice to see a fish swimming by before you've had your lure drop down there. Usually indicates that you're on the fish highway and once you get a lure down, there'll be a whole bunch of fish coming to check your lure out. This is a pretty large school of brook trout and they do tend to swim in schools. The very large fish are alone at times, but the smaller ones usually swim around with a few other fish. This is an interesting school. It has a bunch of different age classes from the newly stocked fish and maybe two or three age classes above it. I wasn't setting the hook on these fish because I wanted to see how they swam around and interacted with my bait with so many fish together. On this spoon I had a combination of a piece of shrimp and nightcrawler and it was really causing them to get a bit excited even though it was the middle of the day and the bite had already turned off. It seems the more fish there are the more of them usually will be likely to bite and uh, in this case this guy, he uh, had a pretty good chomp on that spoon, but kept coming back for more. So he must have liked what he tasted. I love watching them swim right below your feet. And uh, that's really one of the best things about ice fishing, is you have an ability to be really close to your prey and see exactly how they are swimming and interacting with your bait right below the ice. It really helps you learn a lot about fishing and how fish respond to different presentations. Okay guys, if you're at a lake that has fresh ice, you'll notice usually around the shore it's frozen first. You'll feel tempted to just walk, but you gotta watch out because there's some thin spots. Any place there's a rock that can warm in the sunshine, gonna be thin around there. And sometimes these weeds, they heat up and make thin ice. And then the other thing, you see there's open water around that rock. So just avoid those and things that might warm up during the sunshine. Also watch out for beaver and muskrat runs. They'll have thin ice, so 
it might feel okay on this kind of ice, but you can fall through it. The benefit is uh, it's not that deep, so you'll get a wet leg, but you won't drown, okay? So the safest place is always to stick to the edge. Don't cover, cover less ground than you have to and uh, stay safe on the early ice. I just saw a pile of brookies scoot out from under this ice shelf and uh, that's, that's where they're hiding in this really shallow water less than a foot deep under this uh, milky white or opaque ice. But as I went by a whole bunch just scooted out from under there. I should have had the video on but I had just turned it off. Here in this shot I've moved out into deeper water and you can see it's harder to see the bottom. And a fish came in and swam through the right bottom corner with another one following it but they didn't want to interact with my bait here i've moved up into shallower water around four feet deep and you can see that this fish is quite interested in my spoon and keeps coming to it over and over in this clip i've cut out a few of the times he swims out of the frame just to shrink uh, the length of this shot but this fish really stayed around the lure for a long time and shows how uh, invested fish can be in one presentation. But if they're not taking it, sometimes you're better off switching up. And that's why I usually have another rod with a smaller presentation like a tungsten jig baited with a night crawler or a mealworm. And sometimes if you pull up your spoon while the fish is down there and drop that jig down, they'll commit to that smaller lure. If that doesn't work, Sometimes having a small balanced uh, black or olive micro leech will seal the deal for these finicky brook trout that won't uh, commit on a larger presentation. Now sometimes you pull the bigger presentation up and they just disappear altogether. Those days are tough and in that case sometimes putting a flashy spoon with a dropper fly helps. When you're on thin ice you gotta be quiet. Every time you move, it's like amplified noise down there. It really spooks them. So stand really still when you're fishing and just don't say a whole lot. Because uh, when they come by, they spook really easy. Even when it's super clear ice like this, I can see them swimming along. And uh, they'll see me up here. And right away, they'll just turn and swim away. So that's why being on clear ice, I wouldn't have caught anything today because they're being super skittish. It probably would have worked if I would put a jaw jacker and left it alone. But uh, if you have ice uh, that has some snow cover with a, a lake that's mostly clear ice, you're best off going to that opaque snowy ice or cloudy ice because that's where the fish are going to be hiding under that ice and they'll feel much more safe uh, grabbing a lure below your feet when you're not standing on clear ice. Oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. Oh, there we go. I got him. Oh, that's a nice big one. That's a big one. That's a nice big one. Oh yeah. That's a fatty. He's not huge, but he's pretty fat. Look at that one. There you go, got one. Got one. Another fatty. Beautiful brookies, slender spoon. Oh, I got one. It's only in like three feet of water here. That was awesome, right below the ice. He stuck his head up there, boom, ate that spoon. See that? They love those spoons, he just came in and inhaled it. Really shallow water, like three feet, I'm right under the ice just watching down the hole and he grabbed it. Pretty cool. Yeah, just fishing in three feet of water here. 
he actually came out of the shallow water and just a foot below the ice came up and grabbed it. Oh, there you go. Oh, he's not that big. Okay. There was a bigger one down there. I saw him coming behind me. This little guy must have come in and grabbed it. I looked behind me and through the clear ice I could see him coming. And here's today's catch on the dead 636. My limit, five brookies. Probably a range in size from like 15 inches all the way up to, I don't know, 18 inches probably. Nice fish. Okay, that's enough for the brookies today. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was a lot of fun making this video, getting out on super sketchy thin ice. I'm sure this lake just froze over about two to three days ago. And I was watching the temperatures really closely. It's been really warm up until this last few days. So I was lucky to get on. I suspect in the next week to 10 days, this ice will be much safer by then. A lot of the lakes still are wide open. So be careful before you head out because it's a uh, late winter actually. And uh, lakes are just not freezing up this year, but if we get some cold temps, they'll freeze up pretty quickly. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, go check out Circle Tackle. Some great fishing rods and jigs out there. And uh, thanks as always, God bless, see you later.